Hey y'all, my name is Delana Burns and I'm with you tonight on Live with Prima. I want to share uh, a few cards with you tonight that I created. A few um, easel cards and going to make a pretty shaped round one with the butterfly collection. Going to make a sort of an oval shape with the um, uh, bedtime story collection. I'm, I'm forgetting these collections. And I've got one with Timeless Memories, sort of a rectangle shape with uh, some of the new gorgeous flowers and memory hardware and uh, Timeless Memories. Um, not sure who is on next week. I, I did not look ahead. It's always fabulous, so be sure and tune in on Tuesday. I think it's actually Frank Garcia. Don't hold me to that, but I believe it is Frank, so be sure and tune in on Tuesday. 1 o'clock Central Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time. I believe those are the times. So I want to go ahead and pan down and get started with these cards. So if y'all will bear with me just a second while I kind of flip you around. Getting a little better at this. Um, do a little quicker. I'm kind of proud of myself. I'm getting getting control of this camera. So, um, I want to start off with this little um, baby announcement card right here first. And what I've used, you can see it's an easel card. So, when you pack it in its envelope, it's going to lay pretty flat for you. You can kind of see it just sort of lays down flat. But to display it, it just kind of stands up and tucks in behind the little pieces that I've added here. You can kind of see those... Um, little brads and uh, pieces. Give it a second to focus. I'm going to kind of work on this focusing. But you can kind of see all these pieces and little parts. And when you open it out, it's actually a birth announcement. I've got my, of course, my beautiful grandbaby's name and her birth date and weight and length and all on there. But it just makes a really pretty little handmade birth announcement. So I'm going to start off and show you how I assembled that. I'll grab all my pieces. I did this ahead as far as the, the cutting so that um, we would save time. I started off with a piece of cardstock. And you can see I've already cut from the cardstock. I'm going to grab my pieces here. So you can see we started off with an actual piece of cardstock. And... I just sort of eyeballed my cut. I laid my actual um, spellbinders die down to be sure it was wide enough and just used my trimmer to, to cut it um, wide enough for the actual die I was using. So whatever die you decide to use, you just want to be sure you have enough. And be sure that you have it long enough that you can fold it in half. You can see how, how actual long this piece is. And I scored it and folded it in half. This is the Spellbinders Nestability die. Um, decorative elements. And it's, um, let's see, S4314 is the number on this. But it's just an oval scallop shape, sort of an open scallop. So what you're going to do for your first cut, which is going to be this cut right here, you're just going to cut your piece of paper wide enough and then at least twice as long fold it in half when you lay your die down you want to just go over the edge just a little with your die just sort of go right over the end can you kind of see how i've kind of gone over the end of the paper there and so when you get your cut it's going to look like this so you're going to actually have a piece there that didn't cut through so you'll have an opening so you see your opening is there like that. Then you want to take your die and cut one more piece. But you just want a full piece this time. Just a full cut of your die. So those are the pieces that you need to do your actual scallop shape. And what you're going to do to assemble these. This piece here that's been folded. You want to kind of the opening towards you. Take the top piece and fold it back and match it up just kind of eyeball it match it up 
crease it. Kind of give it a crease and then grab your bone folder. You want to make sure that's, that's nice and creased. So you can kind of see you're going to get this right here, this shape right here. You kind of see how that's working? So you got that shape right there. Then what you're going to do with this piece here is you're just going to grab a little glue. And of course, you know I'm going to use my trusty Fabri-Tac. Grab your glue. And I usually add it to this piece here. You want to add it to the top of the piece here that's been folded. Just, you want it to be pretty secure. So add a pretty generous amount. And then just match up the top of your extra cut to that piece and you can kind of see I'm going to kind of move this around to get that glue sort of drying for me but you can kind of see what you're going to end up with you've got your fold and then you've got this piece here when you kind of look under there you kind of see how that's attached so this is actually going to be your workings of your um, easel this is going to this piece here is going to kind of tuck in so what we're going to do now is just embellish this. That's all there is to your card to making the actual working easel. Once we've added our embellishments, we're going to allow it to stand. So easy peasy, right? Really easy, easy to make. So what I've done is just kind of work the head. And I use these oval shapes here. They sort of work. These also are from the Nestabilities uh, Spellbinders collection. So, and these are the classic ovals, and I've used the largest one since I used the largest of the uh, scallop shapes. And you can see that kind of fits right in like this. So, I cut this out of a pink color from the uh, Bedtime Stories paper. And then I went in with my, um, with my actual, let me grab a, grab a piece I can kind of show you. I went in with my 3D gloss gel and these gorgeous silver microbeads and added a little bit of decoration on the front of my on the front of my paper here and I'm just going to show you real quick on a scratch sheet of paper how I achieved that grab a mask I don't believe I have the mask with me that I used I used Jamie's little um I used her um her mask, Adrian, is on my list. The the one that was just released. I'm trying to think of the name of it. I probably still have it in my in my water uh, cleaning. But it's uh, it's Jamie's mask that she just released with um, with the summer release. So Adrian, if you can find that that name, I am so sorry. But I wanted to show you real quick how I did the actual little technique here. Grab my spatula, not my bone folder. Just grab a little bit of the 3D gloss gel. Now I'm just showing you on a scratch sheet of paper. Just really quick. You want to just add a, not a thick layer. You don't want a really thick layer. It can be thin. This sort of, this is sort of nice and thick and um, rich for you anyway. So I'm going to grab a. The uh, gloss gel needs to be immediately cleaned off. It You do not want it to dry on your stencils. Uh, it will forever be there. So I'm going to grab a just a baby right really quick and give it a quick clean. You can let the um, some of the other items soak in water and they'll sort of go away for you. But the gloss gel the matte gel they are forever stay if you don't get them off so you can see we've got our we got our gel there and what i did is just laid it on a piece of felt grabbed my beads and i'm using the felt because it's going to hold on to these beads and prevent them from rolling all over the room i've got kind of a little tupperware top here with the piece of felt and it's just going to help me catch these beads so just give it a really nice, generous sprinkle all over that gel. Just kind of let it roll off onto your felt. And then with your finger, real quick, give it a press. Just give it a quick press so that it's down in that gel. And a little may come off on your finger, but that's okay. 
you're still going to lose a few beads but that's just a really quick way to um, kind of cause those to adhere well and you can see with my finished little oval shape here it's a really nice finish so and uh, I'll show you how nice this felt is you just want to kind of roll it back up to the center and then dump it right back in your little container here just make sure we kind of got it all and you may have a few extra little rolling around on your little Tupperware top here but those will be caught kind of in the edge and you can retrieve those later so just a little quick hint again I'm always looking for a better way to to deal with these beads because they go everywhere okay so back to our finished finished one you can see once it's once it's dry it's just a really pretty finish kind of see let it focus just a second can you kind of see the dimension that you get from that I've got two of these and what I want to do I want to decorate this this top portion here and the inside so again I'm going to grab my Fabri-Tac and just give it a nice nice amount on the back glue it right down to my top and then open it up add a little glue to the back and then we want to add this to the inside just like so I've got a few more pieces cut here and I've just used these oval shapes um, and just use sizes down to make the, the variation the sizes that I needed for my card you can cut as many or as few as you like um, this is kind of what I wanted to do with this one here so what I did on the inside I'll go ahead and do it first just add a little glue and glue it right down it's going to stick right to those beads and this little piece here as you can see these are all let me show you where these are from just show you I cut these from the two the two and a half by three cards and the three by four I think these are little note cards from the uh, bedtime stories collection I have used a lot of these so you can see I've sort of even kept my little edges and pieces that were left over um, so that I can go back and use them I got this little piece here from the little three by the little two and a half by three book here I just sort of punched it right out right there I wanted these lines here because that's where I'm going to add my little birth announcement there so and I'm going to save this because it does have a little sentiment at the bottom that could be used later for something else um, just kind of put them all back in your little book here and hold on to all your little scraps um, cut this little piece here as well from uh, one of these pieces of paper here you can see how I've got all these cut out just to add uh, more more layers and dimension that's why I love these little uh, dies because they just they're so decorative and you can do so much with them so what I want to do next is um, be sure I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be I'm going to add my little announcement card there so what you can do is go in and write the baby's name and um, their birthday weight uh, anything that you want to I did add a few embellishments here a few of the uh, brads and um, different pieces there so I want to grab those that's how your card is going to actually stand up for you by using the um, the pieces there so I'm not gonna gonna use a few different pieces I'm not going to use the exact same pieces um, but I am going to just kind of embellish that and um, show you kind of how I did that so that our card will be an actual easel and you can do it with lots of different things buttons or um, brads or these beautiful say it in crystal pieces lots of different options for doing these so I'm just gonna grab off a couple of these make sure they stay with their glue just gonna kinda stick these down sort of in and around where I want them grab this one kinda overlap them just a little bit if you want to and you can always add a little extra glue probably going to be a good idea especially with the easel cards to add a little extra glue and you can push them as far forward or back as far as you want 
Um, that determines how how actual um, high your card will sit. So just kind of be aware where you're putting these pieces. And you need something dimensional to hold that piece of ribbon or um, these pieces work really well. You want to grab one of the actual setting crystal pieces that goes with the bedtime story. Um, I'm, I'm failing to give y'all numbers. I've got number 579340 here. These are the sanding crystals, uh, 579401. And like I said, you can use any brads or buttons or any pieces that you'd like for these actual pieces. So uh, just kind of use your imagination and use what you've got. Kind of use what you have in your stash. You don't always have to do it exactly like we do it. Kind of do it with what you have and make it your own. So just going to grab another little saving crystal piece here and add a little extra glue decorate that right about there so what you're going to do is just you know when you're done kind of write in there your um, actual baby's name and that kind of stuff so what i'm going to do now is decorate the top of my card while that dries i used a little scalloped oval cut out from the bedtime stories paper so I'm going to grab a piece of cardboard and I'm going to kind of flatten this out I don't want it to stand up real tall but I do want to elevate it a little bit so I'm going to add some glue and put it in behind <coughs> excuse me I had to cough I think my allergies are kind of going crazy here lately so just kind of want to add this just to the front. Next thing I did here, you can see this says baby baby. Um, inside of your little book here, you can find lots of different little sentiments and different things that might be able to be used there. But you can see right here where it's got the, the baby baby. That's where I actually retrieved that from. So I'm just going to kind of cut that out real quick. I'm going to have to grab something to drink. <coughs> I do apologize. I've not coughed all day. And of course I'm going to start coughing now. Okay, so. Get our baby baby cut out. preserving as much of this as I can because I might want to use more later. One of these little books will go a long way with these cards for sure. Grab a little bit of ink and just ink the edges just a little bit. And I am going to grab a Hot dot for this. And I know I don't use pop dots a lot, but I do I do actually have them. I'm just gonna kinda these are really flat, so I'm just gonna kinda roll this up a little with my fingers and stick it behind. Only because this is just so small, but I do want it popped up just a little bit. And I don't want the cardboard to show and make my card look yucky so and this is really sticky I just kind of add this right here across the top <coughs> I do apologize for this coffin oh my goodness okay you can see here what I added on the top of this here is actually a little frame. I'm not going to do that tonight because I'm not going to add the photo to this one yet. So um, this is just a little resin frame that I painted pink and added. I, I painted it with the chalk edgers and I added a few of the micro beads there. I also embellished it with a few flowers. So I just want to grab a flower. These are decorated really simple. This is also from the bedtime stories. 
582302. Love these roses. Also used a few of these flowers here. 581831. I just used a couple of these. I want to grab a few maybe with the, the little pearls in the center. I used some with the silver there. These have lots of different really pretty centers. Very, very pretty flowers. These are some of my favorites um, from this release. Really do like them. So just want to add a little glue. Get in right about there and then add a little glue to this one. Tuck it in right about there. I think my, <clears throat> my screen's going to sleep. I wish I could um, actually watch the chat and read along with y'all. Um, drives me crazy that I can't do that. I just, I've not mastered that. I have a little glue to our little star another little sad and crystal piece i love these little stars uh prima was so cute this time to actually make different sad and crystals for each line so the baby guy the baby line got that adorable little um, star shape so you can see that that is our card you see how quick that went together all that's left here is just to add your little frame and your photo and then your sentiment on the inside you can see how those look just simple little embellishments there and then your card stands up right behind your embellishments you can see it stands up just right in and behind these are not dry yet these do need to dry so it's not going to stand up until those dry but you can see it'll just tuck right in behind your little elements here and um, you just have a really cute sweet um, and very thoughtful handmade birth announcement uh, so that is going to do it for this card. I'll just kind of show you them both close up and then give you a look close at the inside. Just one more peek. You can see just easy peasy um, to put together and um, very, very cool. Once they're finished, it's really cool. So we're going to put all this out of our way. Close up our 3D gloss gel. Grab these embellishments and move them doing these in layers and stages so um, everything will be done and out of the way okay the next thing I want to show you is <clears throat> this little round scalloped card made with the butterfly line with that one I used I used the butterfly line and I used these Spellbinders Nest Abilities again to create these see i used the round circles and i used the scalloped circles as well um, both sets of these so for what i did first is on a rectangle piece of cardstock i cut the, i cut the strip wide enough and then twice as long as my largest scalloped shape i cut it twice as long as my scallop shape and then I laid it down and I made sure that I overlapped my die so that that right there would not be cut so I'll show you again real quick if you've got your cardstock folded then you you just sort of let it hang over the edge there it's going to have about three scallops hanging over the edge when you cut it out so you're going to cut two pieces together on the fold and uh, you can see how long the piece is that I started with <clears throat> that's going to give you this shape right here once you open it out. So you want to do that in a cardstock or a paper. I did it in a cardstock because I wanted it to kind of be a um, contrast. And then you cut one more piece, the entire shape of the uh, scallop. So you've got your pieces there. With your card open, the opening facing you, take the top piece, fold it back match it up you just want to kind of carefully match it up and fold grab your bone folder give it a nice crease give it a nice crease and there you have it just like we did with the oval shaped one then take your extra piece that you cut here 
add some glue to this top folded edge and then match your piece up to that. Move it around, wiggle it just a little bit with Fabri-Tac to distribute the glue. So we want to add that just like that. So you see that's what you end up with. Can you kind of see? That's what you end up with. Okay, and then what I've done is I've used my circle shapes and I've cut a few contrast papers from the Butterfly Collection to um, and I've got a, I've got the product list um, if you look on Facebook under the announcement for the class the product list is there with everything that I've used I use the A4 pad to cut most of my papers so you can uh, if you've got the A4 pad or even the 6x6 six six, you know 12 by 12s whatever you can get these small pieces cut from those so I'm going to start off with this purple um, paper it's like a wood grain purple and I'm just going to kind of center it up on this back piece. Grab your other one. Add a little glue. The most time consuming part of this is the decision making process, I think. Lay this in. If you happen to, to cut in too far on your scallop and your circle kind of is in your fold, which mine is clearing it, um, you can just kind of cut that off with your scissors to sort of even that up. Um, but right now mine is actually clear in the fold, but I did notice uh, in making these that you can, you can require to, you know, a little bit cut off there. So if you do need to, just go ahead and cut that off. Next, I want to add this other contrast piece. And you can kind of see this is just kind of a pink uh, with a cream kind of a swirl on it. And I'm just, I'm not even adding cardboard between these um, or pop dots. I'm just adding these one right next to the other. just like so. The next thing I did is I grabbed some trim. This is the Wheat Jute uh, number 576875 and I just took off about a yard for each side. So you're going to need about two yards um, and if you see it's not enough for you, you can, you can cut a little more. There's 200 yards on a spool of this so uh, very economical. And how I did this actual circle here if I took my fingers you'll take it and start off with your two fingers your index finger and your middle finger hold it down with your thumb give it a couple of wraps around your two fingers and then give it some wraps around all of your fingers around all your fingers and you'll see when you lay this down that you're going to get a you're going to get just a nice kind of a round shape and what I did is just, I added a little glue. I kind of knew I was going to have some embellishments over here in this area. So I just added a little glue right there. And then I just added just a little touch of glue here. Um, just to kind of hold this down. The fabric tac is going to dry clear. So as long as you don't just goop it up. Um, if you do get kind of a little goopy glob, just kind of wipe it away. This needs a little bit more. As far as on that outside, so I'm going to take it around all of my fingers because I want a bigger circle. Um, and so in reality, I'm adding quite a bit more than just a yard. But like I said, you do it like you like it. I wanted quite a bit of um, the jute there. So we're going to add that there. I'm going to grab my jute and pull some more off. That's why 200 yards goes a long way. So I don't mind. I don't mind using quite a bit. For this for this little card very economical I'm going to start off with my two fingers wrap it a few times then I'm gonna put my fingers together and wrap it around my entire group of fingers and that just sort of gives you a um, just a nice shape and I've got glue on my finger so it's kind of sticking to them so just kind of spread it out just a little bit and if it unravels a little you're good just Add a little glue to hold it down. Add a little more. You see, I'm, I'm doing this really quick. I'm not really concerned about it even moving uh, because I'm going to have embellishments there that it's going to be held down in just a few minutes. So I am good with that just like it is. What I want to do is add to my inside first here. And you can see what I've added here is a couple of, couple of um, buttons. 
and I wanted the little fading crystals from the actual butterfly collection. I'm going to grab my fading crystal pieces. I've used these fading crystal pieces, and these are from the butterfly collection, number 579388. These are older buttons from the Fairy Rhymes collection, number 565015. These are actually at Hobby Lobby, I believe, that you can actually pick these up at Hobby Lobby. So they are still out there for sale, and I love them because they have the little butterflies. Perfect little match for this butterfly collection. Just want to open this up real quick, grab a few few of the butterflies lay these to the side so I'm just going to kind of lay these out make sure our, our um, jutes kind of staying down for us now what I did because I am I'm kind of I'm kind of specific about um, buttons not being threaded. I'll show you real quick how I thread a button. It's, um, especially if you're using something like jute, really easy. I just kind of push it through there. I just don't like to see a button not threaded. I've been a seamstress for too many years and it, it bothers me when there's no, when there's no thread in the button. So you're just going to kind of pull it through, tie a knot, and then just snip away the excess, add a little glue, and there you have it. Easy peasy. Be sure and thread this one as well. I wish I could see the chat right now because I would love to see how many others a non-threaded button bothers. Um, I can't, I just can't see it. I just can't read it. It's just not something I can do. Um, <laughs> it is so funny that I, I just, I, I can't master it. I can see names, but it's like all the, all the other writing just kind of runs together. Maybe I need stronger classes. I don't know. It's a problem. So I'll have to, I'll have to find out later if y'all are bothered by buttons that are not threaded. Drives me crazy. Okay, so we just want to kind of glue those down in there and that's going to be our area where we are going to tuck our card in behind that's going to make us the little easel um, <clears throat> I also want to add one of these pretty little fading crystals um, <laughs> Robbie says it bothers her but it doesn't bother Karen Karen it should bother you <laughs> no it shouldn't bother you if it doesn't bother you it just bothers me uh, it bothers Robbie obviously <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. There's our inside. That's all I'm going to do. You can see that's the only thing I've done to the inside of the card. Um, just going to kind of leave that like it is. Going to work on the top. I use these pretty angels. I love these. I have got a bazillion of these in my stash at this point. Number 573478 is the number for these. Um, I, I love them. I just think they are so pretty. These little cherubs, I, I use them. Um, I use them quite a bit. I just think they are so delicate and so pretty. I hoard them. I don't, well, I don't really hoard them. I do use them. So what we're going to do with our little, our little, um, cherub is we're going to spray him with some, some tea stain tea stain color bloom spray so I'm just gonna lay a few napkins down since he's small we won't we shouldn't make too big a mess just gonna kind of protect the other stuff with holding the napkin up that'll that'll be good so that's about all I'm gonna do to him it's just dry him real quick just wanted to kind of distress him a little bit they're kind of stark white and um, got a little bit too much in his eyeballs. I'll wipe that out. But anyway, just wanted to have a little bit of color on him. So that that is it for that. Here we've got the little we've got the little cherub. 
And I want to grab a few flowers. These are from the Butterfly Collection, number 580605. Okay, y'all, I want to poll on um, my Facebook and who loves to thread buttons and who could really care less. I really, I, I really want to know because um, these these flowers are number 580667. I'm just going to grab out a couple of these. Just grab a few of these. Let's get a let's get a pink color. I'm doing a few. I'm doing it a little different than what I did it on the card. That's fine. I don't mind. I'm going to add just a little bit more glue here to get our our jute kind of laying down. Kind of it's kind of get a little wiry on me so I want to make sure it's laid down so what I did is just I added the flowers first you can see on the actual card I added this little um, sentiment and I know I did not bring that over to the table with me this is from the Belle Rouge collection this is from the chipboard in the Belle Rouge collection it's just a just a little piece of uh, the chipboard that says let your beautiful soul shine um, so you can write a sentiment um, on a piece of paper you can use any kind of a sentiment from chipboard or um, any of your papers that you cut it out of you can make your own with some alphas just whatever you want to do as far as the sentiment goes just want to kind of add my flowers and uh, just want to kind of push these together making a little I'm gonna make a little cluster just for the the uh, little cherub to sit in right there gonna add a little glue behind him and these are just gonna kind of he's gonna kind of lay on top of this kind of the the point of putting these in the position that they are is so he kind of lays there and I want to add a few more flowers kind of in and around him kind of want to go behind him with this one just kind of tuck it in behind him it just kind of adds that dimension you always want to go in and behind and tuck and um, just to kind of make your embellishments kind of interesting and your flower arrangements more natural looking I'll kind of show you here what I've done you see I kind of tuck that in behind this one's kind of on top of his little feet and then these were sort of diagonal here and he's just kind of tucked right in right in there you can kind of see that and then I got one more little butterfly that I need to I need to thread I, and, I, and I mean it I need to thread it it I will take it back off I've, I've tried it and I will remove them and thread them I just it is it's one of those things we, we all have one of those things and a non-threaded button is my thing so I just want to kind of Tie him off in a little knot. Cut his little excess away. Oops. Add a little glue. If I can get a hold to him. We want to just tuck him right in. Right in behind that little pink flower. Just lay him right there and kind of see how he is right there. And then I want to grab some of these little Satan crystal pieces. And I'm just using these kind of for color. And these are, again, I think I already told you the number of these go with the butterfly collection. I can't do this without my scissors. Um, let me grab my scissors. I need something to hold on to these with. So I use my scissors to kind of, kind of tuck these in. So just kind of under the jute a few pieces are, are under their piece, few pieces are over but just kind of get it in your cluster there just a few few of these little pieces you want to just kind of tuck in just adds that extra little burst of color and a little more dimension and a little more texture and I love these satin crystal pieces just kind of lift and tuck that in and you can see once you get your sentiment kind of 
glued across there you're just going to have another really pretty um, little card and you see how easy that went together just no big deal at all but it's just it looks like a million bucks it looks like you spent tons of time and um, it'll just be something to be treasured that you give to somebody just a really pretty really pretty card when it's finished you can kind of see the two together a little different not exactly the same but they don't ever have to be the same they can be sisters not twins so um, that's that for that card so I want to do this card next so let's move everything out of our way from that one that was the beauty of doing these with different lines I can just kind of move my mess and move on to the next one okay and this one is going to be a really quick one as well okay I made this one using the timeless memories collection and you can see it's just sort of a traditional shaped card um, kind of a um, rectangle and um, it stands up just like the other pieces do so I started off I cut out a couple of doilies with the um, the doily die, Prima's doily die, and Adrian, I do not have that number with me, but this is Prima's actual, uh, just standard round doily die. I cut out two of those, and I cut the papers measure, I cut a rectangle that measures about eight and a half by five and a half. I scored it in the center so that it would fold and I folded it so that the pattern paper would be on the outside you can see when you open it out you get your backside color so the outside is that that color there so the next thing I have are two more cuts that I made and they measure five and a half by four and a quarter each one is five and a half by four and a quarter so what I'm going to do first is take my card, again, face the opening toward me. I'm going to fold this back, match it up at the top here, and crease this right across just like I did my, just like I did my other pieces. Use my bone folder to give it a nice crease, just like that, so you can kind of see. Oh, my computer's going to sleep. So what I did is took one of my pieces here and added glue, just like the others. Just liberally give yourself enough glue there so you got a nice, a nice adhesion. Put that together, just like so. And what I want to do on the inside here, I want this kind of the same color as the outside. That's why I cut this, this uh, piece here. So add a little glue to it. Kind of all around. You can use the glue of your choice. I just Fabri-Tac is my friend, um, so I always use the Fabri-Tac. So just kind of glue that down, just like so. Match that up. So you're kind of going to get the same color all the way around the card. You're going to have that timeless memories pattern paper versus having that the back color side, uh, which is more of a kind of a distressed solid. So. That's what we have for that. What I did then is I just kind of opened it out. I grabbed this stencil number 962319. And I just laid it across both pieces just like it is. I just kind of laid the card down. Laid it across both these pieces. You can see this is the back. This is the front. So I'm going to put it right across the front of the card. Right down on top of both pieces. Just kind of lay it down there. I'm going to grab some brown ink from a chalk edger. This is dark bark colored ink. Just going to kind of stamp a little bit on my on my mat here. I've got a little I've got a little um, mat. Grab my water. Squirt a little water right there. And I've got this little what is this? A little sponge, a little round sponge brush here so what I'm gonna do is dip my sponge brush in the water first and then I'm going to dip it into the ink can you kind of see what I did kind of move it around roll it around in the ink saturate that sponge brush really good and then I'm gonna just kind of go in various areas 
and add that color. I love these chalk edgers. Whatever I can do to add the color using the chalk edgers, I kind of just do. Um, there are lots of different shades of colors and um, it's just a really easy, pretty inexpensive way to add color. And I just kind of randomly did it throughout both the top piece and the bottom piece. So you can kind of see that's what I did. That's how I got the color there. So just kind of grab it, wipe it away. Just, and these rinse right out of your sponge brush. That'll rinse right off. So just want to kind of dry this up on your, dry it up on your little um, stencil. Then I want to lay the stencil back down. And I'm not going to put it right back on top. I'm not going to line it back up. I'm going to kind of offset it. And I'm going to grab my modeling paste. Got my Prima modeling paste. So I'm just going to grab the modeling paste and then get a little bit on the spatula and just in a few areas. Not going to add a lot of this either. Just, just a little. I don't want a lot. I just want a little texture. So in a few areas I want to add some of this. Okay, that's about all I'm going to do with that. That's it. Uh, as far as texture goes, and grab my dryer real quick. This is going to go together really fast, too. Just going to kind of dry this up. We're, I've got about 15 after, so I'm hurrying. I'm trying to finish this one up. So you can see I'm just going to kind of give it a quick dry. If your card starts to warp, it's not going to warp as much because you've got all these layers. But if it does start to warp, uh, you can just kind of fold it once you're done, kind of put it back in position. Or shape it back to its original shape, I guess I should say. Oops, still wet just a little. Just giving it a giving it a quick dry. Okay, that's pretty dry. So you can see it warped just a little bit, but I'm just going to kind of bend it and shape it back. I'm going to grab my brown ink and give the outside of the card a really good ink. And you can do this before you actually put the card together, or like I'm doing, kind of after. It doesn't really matter. But just give it a nice a nice inking. Even ink this edge here. Okay, so what we're going to do on the inside of our card here, you can kind of see. Just going to add our doilies. Add a little glue. Just going to add a little glue right to the center of that doily. One here. <clears throat> and you can see the doily. <coughs> Excuse me. The doily is made out of the back side. So if you turn it over, it's the same paper. Um, it's kind of made from the back of the paper that we've used here, so that we're sure that it's a kind of a kind of a peachy color. Lay that right about there. The sentiment on this one as well came from the Belarus collection. This was in the chipboard, and uh, I don't know why I didn't think to bring that chipboard over to the table. But this uh, Love Is Beauty is uh, actually in there. There's quite a few sentiments in there that could be used for these pages. So I want to use a flower from this pack. It's number 581206. I love these flowers. They are like thick cardboard type material. They are so cool with these really pretty centers. Um, I just happen to have a loose one here. So I want to use this flower along with these are the Timeless Memories flowers, number 580841, and also flowers from 580834. And what I've done to make my stopper here for my card is just added a few flowers. I do have a little metal flower here. Uh, I'm not going to add a metal flower. I didn't grab one for that, but I can actually do it with just actual flowers because we're going to use a, free, a few of Frank's beads as well. So just... Grab a couple of flowers. 
gonna I think we're gonna just go ahead and use three I'm trying to grab the colors that I know I want I should just probably dump these out that's gonna be the easiest let's just let's just dump these out so let's grab let's grab this one here so just want to kind of glue these down right about here these cards are so easy to make and um, just kind of kind of push those together to make a little stack there so that you'll have something for the card to kind of tuck behind for the back of your card to kind of tuck in behind so just kind of add those there just about like that then we're going to grab our beads I love these beads definitely I love these beads so we're going to grab one here one of the larger gold ones just add a little glue we're going to tuck it in right about there I'm going to grab a smaller one here and I do like to kind of hold these with my scissors sometimes too they try to roll away before they kind of adhere but um, I'm going to grab a few small ones I may have to kind of dump these out to get some of the smaller ones that you need so let's just grab a few and there are some even smaller than that way down in there you can see there are some and they like to roll away so be careful you can see that one right there is really small so sorry about that noise in your ears just want to add a few of these These are um, some of my favorite things. I love these beads a lot. I am going to need my scissors if I can find them. Well, I may not be able to find them. I don't know what I did with them. I probably moved them away with my other card pieces. So just kind of lay that down just about like that. You can see what a pretty little cluster that makes. You kind of see that and then your card is going to be able to be propped just right behind that and that's going to have your that's going to make your card stand up can you see that really 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 pretty okay so the next thing I want to do is grab my other flower for the cluster at the top here I want to I want to use one of one of these flowers along with one of the cardboard I don't know what else to call this um, because of the feel of it, it's just really thick, really, really nicely made. Add a little glue there, add a little glue there, and just want to kind of push those together, hold them down just a second so they kind of stay together, like so. Next, I'm going to grab a little uh, medallion. I don't have this packaging with me. This is from the Memory Hardware as well. It's just a little, just a little medallion. I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to fill it with some glossy accents. Just going to fill the center with some glossy accents because we're going to actually fill this with beads, or we're going to fill it with micro beads first. And then we're going to add a few of the um, a few of the glass beads as well. So let me grab the I'm going to grab the actual bronze colored micro beads, and I'm going to grab my my little piece of felt. I'm going to grab my felt. So let's lay this here. Lay this here on the felt and just drop those on there there you have it it comes back into focus come back into focus come on camera okay let's give it a minute okay you can see you can see how the micro beads are on there the next thing i want to do is just kind of tuck this in under the flowers here almost like it's like it's 
it's hanging from inside there it's just going to kind of be an illusion we're going to hide we're going to hide it kind of tuck it up under there and then add another flower or two just going to grab a flower add a little glue tuck that right in there you can kind of see how that's just kind of added there then i want to tuck one more flower kind of in up at the top and all these flowers coordinate all these colors just look really pretty together so just use any any one that you want so the last thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add a few of these beads to the actual little hanging medallion trinket there just want to add a couple of them grab a smaller one and add those right about there can you kind of see it's going to take just a second for those to dry but you can see what it's going to do it's going to give you the illusion that the beads are kind of falling from the bouquet there I can't really stand it up well until this glue is dry, but let me show you on the finished one. It's giving you the illusion that these beads are kind of kind of falling down and landing here at the bottom of the card there. It just sort of gives that some cohesion and um, just a really pretty interesting look. And that is it. That is um, Add Your Sentiment. And that's it. Um, they are that easy. They are that fast. Um, I did do some cutting ahead as far as the dies. But um, other than that, we, um, we finished three cards in an hour. So um, you can kind of see I'm going to go ahead and pan up. And you'll get to see me one more time. Okay. Okay. I think I'm mastering this camera. I think I'm actually getting it. So... You can kind of see one more time the cards. This was the one we just did. There's one. Here is number two. Number two right there. This is our little birth announcement. So you could do little invitations. You could do lots of things. And people can sit these on their desk, on their kitchen counter. Lots of things and places they can do with them to enjoy them. Um... Just a lot better than just your old card that goes in an envelope. I do have a envelope, an idea for an envelope that will hold these. Um, I may put that on my blog or do it in a later show. So um, be watching for that. A really simple card that um, helps to house the depth of these two because they're so thick. So um, I'll be sharing that with you. This is the first time that I finished early. It is, it's, I'm two minutes two minutes early so um thanks everybody for joining me i see gabby is still here um hey carol um see if i can see anybody else robbie's still with us janelle's still with us hey bona bona is here hey bona how are you chris is here hey chris um okay so that is it um that's all three cards so y'all thank you again so much for joining me don't forget to come back on tuesday 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, or 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, and I do believe it's Frank Garcia. So he'll have something fabulous, of course, to share with y'all. Um, wherever Carrie is, have fun, Carrie, uh, on the rest of your vacation, y'all. So anyway, thanks for joining me, and I will see you again in a few weeks. Bye now.